Hey, so I wanna make a video real quick going over something that happened with a carrier that I work with. Um, carrier that I've been with for, I guess we've been working together with factoring for maybe six to nine months now. He's doing fantastic. He started out with one box truck and now he's on, He's he now has three trucks, box trucks, and he's gonna be purchasing a 53 foot dry van soon and he's killing it. Um, you know, working with me and me working with him. Um, he experienced a really unfortunate situation this past week where he got in a head-on collision with his truck. He's okay, um, but quite the experience. And it was quite a process, as you could imagine, somebody going through um, with how those kind of things evolve. Um, just going through the process of resolution, accident, situation, police, uh, claims, adjusters, getting towed, um, insurance companies, and working through that process. Um, and while he was going through that process, something populated that I wanted to bring to your attention that could be worth you turning over that stone. And what I mean by that specifically is the tow truck company that the carrier had his vehicle towed with um, told him, hey, listen, you know, in the future, if I ever get other vehicles that get in accidents, those loads they need to be they need to be transloaded to a, another truck to finish the load for delivery for the broker. Um, can I call you? And the carrier was like, "Yeah, sure, that would be great. Call me." Um, so the idea and the topic of question that I'm making this video about is you as a carrier doing business development to find more business by networking with tow truck companies. Um, yes, you can do this, but at what cost is what I would say. Is it really worth your time? Yes, there are loads you can get and there is a situational demand and price that will happen when you find yourself in a very, very rare, not too often situation. And let me expand upon that and not be too too drawn out when I talk about it. Um, basically, it's a complex situation speaking as a former broker myself when this does happen and finding a solution when it does happen. You have a truck that picks up the load and it needs to be delivered to the delivery location, but an accident happens. Well, now I need a different truck to come in, transload, pick up that product and take it to delivery and drop it off. Um, so it's that that's that part in between, which is dicey. Um, underneath that scenario, talking about it out loud right now, verbally talking it out, yes, it does work that way, but it's much more sticky as it goes. And what I mean by that is, this carrier at the shipper that went, picked up the load and got in an accident, the Raycon has their name on it. Well, if this happens, the accident happens outside at five o'clock, it's after business hours. Well, sure, the tow truck company could call some other carrier to go pick up the load and they can come in, pick up the load and head towards the delivery, but their name isn't on the rate confirmation. And you do not, want to load anybody's product, even taking the time to load it on your truck without your name on the Raycon, not worth it. Because if you get loaded with it and the broker says, no, I don't want it to go on this truck, or no, it has to go back to the shipper, it doesn't even need to go to the receiver now, those things do happen in transit when accident situations happen. Um, so no. I would not advise it, under this situation getting in an accident, the, the, the product needs to be taken off that truck and put onto a different truck to be transloaded to complete to delivery. Not always. What I would say is if it's during business hours, eight to five, when this vehicle, if it gets in an accident, and the tow truck company is there to assess it and they know you and they call you and say, hey, carrier, ABC carrier, are you in the area? Can you come grab this load? And you can say, sure, yeah, I am in the area. Maybe you're not, but let's just say you are. Yeah, I can come over and help and, 
and pick up this load and take it to completion at the delivery location. Okay, great. Well then, that tow truck company now needs to get you in contact with this carrier. This carrier needs to communicate with the broker, hey, the truck is broken down. Uh, hey, we have another carrier that we know that is in the area that's gonna come intercept and do the transload. Take that product and take it to the delivery. Broker, would you be interested in using this truck that we know that can offer a solution right now? Okay, great, you are interested, broker? Awesome, well, the MC number for this other carrier is gonna be yada, yada, yada. We gotta do a carrier packet with them, and now an updated Raycon needs to be given to them, transloaded needs to take place, and the truck needs to head towards the delivery. And if you don't do it in that way, you could show up, be super nice to the tow truck people, and super nice to the unfortunate carrier that got in an accident, and you could transload that product without the broker's permission and the broker doesn't even know that this has happened if it's outside of business hours or if he just can't even get over the broker. There's things that we do out of the kindness of our hearts and morally, ethically, and just trying to be good people. Um, and I, I, I have, I, I'm 35 years old and I have learned in my period of time, nobody gives a damn about my feelings or about me doing the right thing. And most like, 99% mo of the time, if I, try to help people, it doesn't really work out for me. And that's unfortunate for the story of my life. Hopefully your life isn't that way. Um, not to say that I'm not gonna always help people that I do care about and that I do work with and carriers that I work with with factoring that call me after hours, after five o'clock, when they're in crazy situations, they call me. When it's the weekend, they call me. Yeah, I'm available, absolutely. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes people take advantage of us. And in those situations, you could get loaded with that product, start heading to the delivery, not even have a Raycon yet with your name on it. it. Still has this carrier's MC on it. Doesn't have yours. You could deliver it and out of the kindness of your heart and have some agreement with this carrier that you're gonna, they're gonna pay you. Well, that's technically double brokering. And then this carrier's now put on the do not use list and you're put on the do not list list within that brokerage. Could be CH Robinson. You could be getting tons of business over the course of the next 12 months with that broker that you are now on the do not use list. Is it worth turning over those stones, calling tow truck companies and asking them, hey, when you guys are in a situation where your truck, you, you, you are called to tow a truck truck, a box truck, an 18 wheeler, flatbed, whatever, and the product needs to be transloaded. You could call me pretending like I am you, the carrier. You could call me, but if I'm not in the area, I can't help out. But if I am in the area, I can help out. And if it's during business hours, we have to go through that entire order of operations to make sure the right name is on the Raycon. Otherwise, if you agree to do the load, it, it could go south in a variety of different ways. It really, really could. Uh, in other ways, it could go great. But that's a really small percentage. And I'm not going to base the structure and the business model of the, sec the su success of your business on the small opportunity of getting some loads from tow truck companies every once in a while, focus on the load board, focus on carrier sales, building relationships with direct customers. Maybe you can cold call some tow truck companies. I wouldn't spend too much time doing it. Couldn't hurt. But again, you gotta do all that stuff in order to make sure your name is on the Raycon so when you pick it up and you take it to delivery, you get paid. Otherwise, you could be put on the do not use list, or let's say it goes really well. I'm thinking like a 25% probability that it goes the way you want it to go. You could talk to the broker and be like, hey broker, you're in a jam. Your product is on this truck and it needs to be delivered. Well, I'll be happy to help you, but because you're in a jam, you're paying them $1,000 to do the load. I want you to pay me 15, I'm ready to go right now. Under those, under those demand situations, the broker, the broker will fold. Not always, majority of the time, 60, 40, and pay you what you're asking for because you're right there, you're offering a solution, and you're trying to get that load to the delivery location. I'd say it's 25% of the probability of that working out, um, getting paid the 1,500 and not the 1,000 plus getting all the paperwork changed and the trans load and the time and the product not being damaged between transferring it from a broken truck 
to a non-broken truck and then what if the product is damaged there's it's just really gray i would encourage you not to waste too much time doing this you can do it i wouldn't focus on it i would focus on you know the the load board the brokers working with direct shippers uh that's where i would focus the future and the structure of your business for the future that way as opposed to calling a bunch of tow truck companies and sure there are loads there are situations there are demand situations where you can capitalize on it and make more money yes i'm not saying that there aren't yes there are i wouldn't put too many eggs of in my in that basket i wouldn't you can i wouldn't do it though it's kind of have a couple of tow truck companies and if they call you up and, it, and then there's an accident that's before five o'clock and you can talk to the broker yourself and get the Raycon changed to your name with the your MC number. Okay, do not do anything through a text message or he said, she said, or an email. Raycon. Raycon with your MC DOT number on it. Otherwise, you could pick up the load and then be waiting for the Raycon and haven't left to, to go yet. And then the broker says, nah, never mind. The product needs to... Uh, go somewhere else and it's on your freaking truck you've already taken the time and now you have to offload it put it on some other truck or put it back on that truck or put it at a warehouse you 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 have no raycon of agreement to do the job but it's on your truck so it even could be viewed as um that you stole it um i wouldn't i wouldn't play with it too much anyway i don't want to make this video too long that's my two cents catch you in the next video bye